Hey everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about this thrilling topic of cardiac pressures and devices used to measure those pressures. Uh, before we get into that, it's the channel of the Whiteboard Doctor. We're an open access medical education YouTube channel bringing you hopefully interesting and relevant content. We've been doing a lot of COVID-19 content today, but still trying to dabble in general medical education content as well. Um, we have the subscribe button in the bottom right corner for all you that feel inclined. Thank you very much. We also have some links in the video description to ways you can support us if you want to get involved in that manner. All right, cardiac pressures and devices. Today we're going to talk about the different areas of the heart and kind of hemodynamic uh, spots right around the heart as well as their um, normal pressures and then we're going to go into different invasive devices that can be used to measure those pressures all right so to start i just want to talk about you know the heart this beautiful drawing that we put together aka not so beautiful but we think it's hopefully interpretable um, and then the pressures in each area so here we have the right side of the heart. We have the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the right atrium. The typical pressures we would expect in this area are 0 to 8 millimeters of mercury. All right. That is the right atrium, and as such, also the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, 0 to 8 millimeters of mercury. Traveling down through the tricuspid valve here into the right ventricle, um, we start to get higher pressures and we start to get a systolic and diastolic. In the right ventricle, we expect 15 to 30 millimeters of mercury over zero to eight. Now you might notice that the zero to eight diastolic is the same as the right atrium. That's gonna be a common pattern that we start to see going forward in terms of diastolic and systolic pressures, all right? From the right ventricle, right, it contracts, the tricuspid valve's closed, and the blood goes through the pulmonary arteries towards the lungs. And in the pulmonary arteries, we expect the pressure to be 15 to 30, I'm going to write it up here, like the right ventricle, over 4 to 12, about is what they say, for diastolic, okay. And then that blood shoots out to the lungs. It then travels back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, where we expect our pressure to be 1 to 10, so a little higher than the right atrium, but similar. And then through there, it goes through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, where we have a pressure of 100 to 140 over 3 to 12. Right? And that's about our systolic pressure, right? The left ventricle then contracts, shoots blood through the aortic valve, through the aorta, into the rest of the body. And that pressure is just your normal blood pressure. We're going to say 100 to 140 over 60 to 90 diastolic. All right. There's another way we can write this out, and it might be a little easier to digest, so we wanted to do that as well. And that kind of lays the path of the blood into this box format. So the first part is the right heart, and we're gonna kinda go through that. So blood travels in through the vena cava and goes into the right atrium, RA, and the right atrial pressure, as we talked about, is zero to eight. It then travels through a valve, right, which is the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, and the right ventricular pressure, as we talked about, is 15 to 30 over zero to eight. It then travels through another valve, right, which is the pulmonic valve, into the pulmonary artery. And that pressure, as we talked about, is 15 to 30 over 4 to 12. All right. And then it goes through the lungs. And we'll get into something called the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Uh, but it goes through the lungs, out of the lungs, into the left atrium, right? And in the left atrium, as we talked about, the pressure is expected to be 1 to 10, oops, not 1 to 100, 1 to 10. And then it goes through another valve, the mitral valve, right, into the, let me just straighten out those lines a little bit. Oh, let me grab my eraser. So it goes through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, Right, where we start to get higher systolic pressures consistent with the systemic circulation, 100 over 140, but still, you know, our lower diastolic pressures, 3 to 12. Okay, and then it travels through one more valve into the aorta, which is the last place it goes, 
Let me see if I can get a better pointer here. Good, into the aorta where the pressure is, you know, the systemic pressure, 100 to 140 over 60 to 90. So that kind of traces the blood flow just in a different box format than we did with the actual drawing of the heart itself. All right, and then that leads us into different devices that we can use to monitor this pressure. So when someone is sick, someone with severe heart failure, cardiogenic shock, pulmonary hypertension, left side of heart failure, right side of heart failure, all these pressures are tremendously important um, because all of them will drive the care you provide, right? If you have increased left ventricular you know, pressures, you might have to decrease afterload, right? If you have increased right ventricular pressures from something like pulmonary artery hypertension, you might have to dilate the pulmonary arteries to offload the right ventricle. Um, Many, many utilities, especially in the cardiac intensive care unit, for these heart pressures. How do we monitor them? Well, the first device is actually a central line. This is a central venous catheter, commonly referred to as a central line. And that goes into the cavoatrial junction, right? And I'm going to put a one here, right? The caval, superior vena cava, atrial, right atrium, and it sits right there. And in the cavoatrial junction, it can give you the right atrial pressures as well as the SVC pressures. And that's via something called the central venous pressure, the CVP. And that's something we can actually hook up to the monitor and project on the vital screen is a continuous assessment of the central venous pressure, the CVP. Now, it's notoriously inaccurate, so trending it is usually of most benefit rather than just monitoring it itself. Um, what else can you do bedside? Um, and I should specify these are going to be bedside devices. We're not going to go into right and left heart caths and those kinds of things. Um, well, that's where we get into the, you know, everybody's favorite pulmonary artery catheter, which is also known as a swan gans. And the pulmonary artery catheter swan gans um, is super dynamic, so it can actually measure right atrial pressures. I'm going to write it out, and then we'll talk about kind of how it does each of these things. It can also, so two dashes for the same as above, pulmonary artery catheter and swan gans can measure right ventricle pressures. It can measure pulmonary artery pressures. And then you could do this cool thing called the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure also just known as the wedge, which can give you insight into the left atrial pressures. So how does it do this? Well, as we talked about for our central line, it can sit right there. Well, let me just circle these. So we have two, three, four, and then five. Well, when you put a pulmonary artery catheter in or swan gans, you go, you know, through often, and it depends, but often the groin, and you go up into the IVC. And as you're traveling up the IVC, you can take the pressure here in the right atrium, right? And that's your number two. And then you go through the tricuspid valve with this catheter into the right ventricle, and you can take the pressure in the right ventricle. And then you actually take it and go into the pulmonary artery, and you can take the pulmonary artery pressure. The wedge pressure, though, is interesting. You advance it into one of these branches off the pulmonary artery, and you take what they call a wedge. To do that, you actually inflate a balloon and obstruct that branch of the pulmonary artery. And then distal to that, you have a sensor. And that sensor checks the pressure after you've stopped any blood flow. And what that pressure is then is a representation of what is distal to the balloon, which is the left atrium, right? Because the pulmonary artery goes into the lungs, pulmonary veins go back to the left atrium. And since you've inflated this balloon, obstructing any pressure getting by from the right side of the heart, what you then get is your left atrial pressure, which is distal to the balloon. All right. I hope that's helpful. This is something that comes up a lot in things like the intensive care unit, cardiac intensive care unit. It's good to conceptually know as well. So let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Thanks for checking out the video. Video, stay well. We will see you all next time.